just stop eating. Sounds easy, right? Just put the food down, close the package. Don't even think about that whole cake. On the counter, it's just a cake. Well, to some, it's not just cake. To some people, a colorful, fun-looking cake is their heroin. And if you know anything about drugs, they can kill. And so can cake. It's so deadly, but addictive. Sweet and makes people happy. So happy that they just decide to live their life this way and let that cake consume them. It's like, gosh, how do I, how do I get control of that? I just, I, is heaven no willpower? And these people are fine with it. They've accepted it. Sometimes it's just like, why bother? If food makes me happy and I'm gonna die anyways, why don't I just make myself happy? Today we're looking at two influencers who have settled on dying, but two different endings and outcomes. Hello and welcome to It's Another Fat Chick Video. Yeah, yeah. My name is Michelle and I talk a lot about obesity and binge eating because I struggled with binge eating and my whole family is obese. I watch fat people shows because it shows me the road I was going down and they make me appreciate the fact that I never got that big. Thank you, Sky Daddy. But it also serves me a reminder of what could have been. And luckily my audience loves these videos as I give a lot of tips on how to literally beat up, physically assault that nasty binge eating and not let food control you. Literally, that's the, some, of the, some of us had that cake's hands wrapped around our neck while we ate it. Can you imagine literally getting choked and then trying to eat? It's very, very hard. So if you enjoyed that, please hit the subscribe button. My goal is to get to 650,000. And remember, when we get to every 100,000, so 700,000 for now, we do a very juicy question and answer. Remember last time I made it quite thick, juicy, moist. Okay, let's hike these things up and start. Samantha Mason, age 36, and over 800 pounds. Before we get to Samantha's current condition, let's talk about what got her to this point, her tragic upbringing. So Samantha's father was a wonderful person when sober. When he wasn't, he was extremely violent, especially when it came to his wife and Samantha's older sister and brother. And Samantha recalls that when her dad would get very angry or physical, she would just run away, grab food to consume, and she found that the food that she would eat would calm her down. So from an early age, she connected food with comfort. Eventually her mom got out of the situation and though the abuse stopped, life did not get easier for the family. Two of the children, Samantha and her sibling, got to go with her mom and the others went with their dad. So they pretty much had a broken home already, which got even more broken, crumbled. And you know how it is for single moms of one, and this woman had two kids, along with the stress of, dang it, I can't provide for my other kids. I have two kids here and I'm very low on money. Pretty much everything is just up. Eventually it got too much and she really wanted to better herself so she could eventually have all of her kids. She ended up going to nursing school but the long hours and time meant she didn't have anything left in her to care for the two children she had under her care. And eventually Sam and her siblings went back to their father. Samantha's father was an alcoholic. I never would have chosen for Samantha to stay with him but your choices are really limited sometimes. Unfortunately, living with Sam's dad was stressful for her. He had remarried, his new wife also had a daughter, and just the change in dynamic was too much and very stressful. And the big kicker is at dad's house, they wouldn't allow her to eat as much as she could at her mom. But they would not allow me to eat what I wanted. So I was hungry all the time. It was awful. Two things brought Samantha happiness, food and her mom. And she got to see her mom every other weekend, which was like her favorite thing because at her mom's house, there was absolutely no limits when it came to food. She got her mom's love and full access to anything in the kitchen and anything out of the kitchen, like at the fast food restaurants. At 10 years old, Samantha's weight racked up to 200 pounds and this made her father and stepmother limit her food even more. This only made Sam resent her dad and her new mom, increased her anger and frustration and led her to eat more. I didn't want to be told what to eat. And I was more determined to eat what I wanted because that's what made me feel like I was okay. Sam's weight gain never slowed down. She kept gaining rapidly. 11 years old, 250 pounds, 13 years old, 300 pounds. And that's the time when her weight actually started bothering her immensely. Samantha didn't have any friends. She was in constant pain and she was still getting bigger and bigger as the years went on. She had absolutely no restraint when it came to food. And at age 17, 400 pounds is when she found herself pregnant from her first boyfriend. 
girlfriend. She was limited on friends and human connections outside of her mother and said that she was really in love with him and since she loved him so much, thought a baby would make the situation better. You probably already know where this is going. But to spoil it, it wasn't a good situation. After the birth of her daughter, she was 500 pounds and said that she looked into this tiny baby's eyes after she gave birth and thought, I'm going to fuck her life up because my own life is a mess. She's gonna end up just like me, obese, depressed and broken. And it didn't help that the relationship between Samantha and her boyfriend was extremely toxic. Luckily, Samantha did leave and you know, the toxicity left, but she was a single mom. She had her first baby at 18 years old. She was 500 pounds and even in even more pain than she ever was. Plus had to take care of a baby. She had no clue what she was doing, but her mom came through and ended up helping her out a little bit. Finally, when she thought she could finally gather her thoughts, organize her whole life and start just being a better person, she got news that her father died. But when I was 20, I suffered a devastating blow because my father was killed in a motorcycle accident. And it's still something I haven't gotten over to this day. Once again, her weight skyrocketed. As her weight went up, her mental health plummeted into a dark hole and she soon found herself to be 600 pounds at 23 years old. But she did end up pulling herself out. She eventually got a job that she actually really liked. It paid the bills, but her weight was not even stable. It just kept going up and up and up. So much so that it affected her job and she got fired. So I tried to get another job, but I was so big that no one would hire me. And I just gave up. Okay, time out real quick. I feel like if anyone from the fat positive, you know, movement, people watched this episode, that's what they would focus on. How dare they fire this, this seemingly able-bodied person for her weight. This is why we need fat positivity. Y'all, this story is dark. She lost her job, the thing that made her feel a little bit normal, a little more human, like she was doing something positive to better herself and take care of her daughter. After she lost that job, she couldn't find another one. No one would hire her, which I understand I wouldn't, I would never hire her. She can barely walk. I hope you're picking up on this theme. Something happens to Samantha and then she gets very depressed, secludes herself, eats a lot of food, and her weight skyrockets. And that's exactly what happened now. Samantha would eventually find herself at 800 pounds and contemplating taking out her life through the S word. And she went through with it by taking an excessive amount of medications. Fortunately for her, her own daughter found her body in the bathroom. I just remember I went into the bathroom and her body was trying to reject all the medicine that she had taken. And she told me not to call 911 because she didn't want to be in that hospital. She just wanted to be gone. But I didn't care. I'd called 911 without her because my mom really is my best friend and um, losing my mom would probably just break me completely. After three months in the hospital, Samantha couldn't find a job and so she started modeling. F-word modeling is a type of taboo modeling that gives people with an unusual attraction an outlet to use to their benefit. You can be any type of model, foot model, armpit model. You can have a guy lick your armpit and pay you $5,000. Muscle ladies out there, if you don't care, you know, being around some weird dudes, they will let you rustle them and break their neck. 10,000, easy. I've had so many requests, block, weirdos. And some of these people will go absolutely wild for a morbidly obese woman who can't move, not very mobile, to eat in front of the camera. And that is exactly what Samantha decided to capitalize off of. Hi, long time no see everybody. People ask me all the time, when is gonna be that cake video? Well, it's right now. It's making me bigger and bigger. I can just feel it. Grandma always said, never do what you're good at for free. Just kidding, Grams never said that, but I'm saying it. Now, many people who are against this type of work think that all the models are degrading themselves, they must hate themselves, they have absolutely no confidence, and in Samantha's case, yeah, her confidence is very low. But apparently, this type of, you know, job modeling helped her with her confidence. My mom's self-image really improved after she started that modeling job kind of makes her happier because those people just find her as beautiful. They find her as a human being, not some huge maniac. We've come to the saddest part of this situation and it's the end of this cake. I mean, I personally think many of those people look at her as more of an object of pleasure. I can only imagine the comments 
But I have many friends that do this type of work. They love it. Made them a better person. Paid for their college. Made them independent. They capitalize off something that people sexualize for free. Like so, most of them don't even get naked. It's just bikini pictures. Or they, they're like spreading their feet or something. So it depends on who you talk to. So, I sped you up on the background. Where has all of this left Samantha? Well, she's over 800 pounds. <laughs> but I'm gigantic. Just in my house. She's actually still able to walk and get up. She just suffer every minute. And usually when she gets up, it's to get the food that she's ordered, as she is very close to being bedridden. She can barely make it to the bathroom on her own. She struggles to even fit through the door when she is able to get to the bathroom because of her stomach and it's so large and so hanging. Bathing itself is a huge chore. The folds, the moving, it's a lot for someone who's over 800 pounds. And at this point, she really only has food to comfort her. And then I'm safe as long as I'm full and happy because food is a hug from the inside. But finally, Samantha is ready to change. I want to live! So you guys know what time it is. It's time for doctor now. But unfortunately, Samantha never even makes it to the office. Samantha had set up an appointment with Dr. Now, but there was a lot of problems. So one, she can't fit in a vehicle. The only thing that can really transport her is a bateriatric ambulance. Now let's talk about problem two. Before she could even figure out the whole car situation, she got extremely sick, very painful stomach pains and has to go to the hospital. Samantha finds she has kidney stones, but they can't operate on her because she's so large. They end up giving her pills and sending her home as they can't do anything for her. So a few days later, she calls her mom and sister over and she was hoping that maybe they would offer her some help when it comes to transportation, who by the way, are not obese. You guys cannot come up here saying, obesity runs in the family, looks like nobody runs in your family. Part of me was hoping that my mom and sister would offer to help me. I'm thankful they came to support me but I'm not feeling a whole lot better. Anyway, they just look at her and say, we know you can do it, figure it out. I've been sad for a long time about what your life has been, but you were so adverse to doing anything about it. They've tried in the past to help Sam, but they're, they're pretty much done with it. And I finally realized about three years ago, once somebody's not motivated to help themselves, you can knock yourself out trying to help them, but you're not gonna get anywhere with it. So I can't do it anymore. I'm through. Well, once again, Sam starts getting stomach pains and now chest pains and a bunch of other things. I'm water with that and my chest just feels really, like it hurts. My foot's messed up. Oh my God. The bed lost my twice. Wait, what? My chest feels heavy. There's a big giant crack in my heel. All right, that's painful. And I can barely walk. But it's like my shoulder blades hurt in the front. So does someone want to write these out and send it over to the people in that delusional ass group that says obesity is beautiful as they run through the flowers? For now, what the f Everything went south really fast. And I'm trying to be positive, but how are you supposed to keep that positivity? Well, it's your lucky day. I have the solution. I know what you mean. Body positivity. Can you guys imagine if Tess Holiday, Virgie Tovar, any of those people were like, don't worry, we have something for you. It's called body positivity. You and your mom can embrace all of this. Use it, feel it, love it. And poor Bella is listening to all this and then looks over at her mother and sees her waddling in her own feces. Soaking wet. Can you help me change my sheets and my pillows so I don't have to sit in my own filth any longer? Well, look at that. Now that's very positive, right? All bodies are good bodies, right? Oh, also in the hospital, Samantha finds out she's 940.1 pounds. She's almost two 1,000 pound sisters. So yeah, fat positivity, woo! Fuck those people and fat positivity. Honestly, clip this little section, send it to them. You're a sick individual if you think this is positive. Unfortunately, Samantha's weight skyrocketed to 974 pounds. There was really no hope for Samantha. As she was in the hospital, her health deteriorating quickly, she was on the phone ordering food and constantly overeating. A chicken Caesar salad with chicken breast and ranch dressing with that. And then a bowl of grapes, um, a bowl of cottage cheese, Pepsi, chocolate milk, and carrot cake. 
Dr. Now wouldn't accept her as a client because he thought she was going to die at any moment. There was no point of her getting transported over there. He quickly called a colleague in the Denver area and actually got her to a facility to get a gastric sleeve. But unfortunately, she ended up having a wound that would not heal at all. So they had to keep her there even longer, which played out in her favor. She dropped over 400 pounds. Amanda is doing really well. We've been able to get a lot of weight off her the past few months. She's down to 640 pounds as of yesterday. And she's really motivated. She's doing PT and not fighting that at all. Well, I guess if you want Dr. Now's approval, just eat yourself up until you're the size of Tammy Slayton and Amy Slayton combined, and he'll give it to you. Because Samantha didn't work for her surgery, she became known as one of the most hard-headed and unmotivated cast members on My 600 Pound Life. So why are you getting the weight while in the hospital? Well, I'm not, I wasn't really following any kind of a diet plan. I'm so hungry. <laughs> the size of the Titanic. You need to find food. a positive. There's no positive though. There is a positive. Where? There are Reddit posts after Reddit posts about how Samantha was one of the worst people and how she will definitely gain all her weight back. Well, Samantha is very present on social media. As you can see, she has lost a substantial amount of weight. Her face difference is amazing. Now, unfortunately, she's extremely vocal about the show. I mean, unfortunately for the show, but fortunate for us because you know how nosy we are over here for the tea. I don't give three shits what Dr. Now wants. I didn't work with Dr. Now. I worked with Dr. Haydari. I talked to Dr. Now for 20 minutes. In that entire two hours that I was on TV, you guys saw how much I talked to him. She also says how she regrets getting weight loss surgery, her hair is falling out because of it, and has a hard time with the very large amount of rude comments about her and her struggle with food. And she also regrets doing the show. Like, I didn't want to be on the show anymore. I found Dr. Haydari, but I had signed that goddamn fucking contract. But the question is, would she have lost the weight on her own or would she have died there. I personally will take the hair loss and slap some extensions in rather than dying in bed and like living in my own filth. Now I said we were gonna talk about two influencers and we are. As you can see, Sam said that she regrets the surgery, but she's alive. She's living life. She's actually found that coloring helps her not focus on food. But Samantha's story reminded me of a very painfully sad current situation that I just saw about an influencer literally waiting to die. Uh, I just, I, I feel I feel like I'm I'm coming to the very end of my rope. Um just kinda going through the motions, like I said, and just waiting for the end. I said it. Hungry Fat Chick is an influencer that eats on camera. You'll see her featured in Nico Avocado videos, gorging on mass amounts of food. In many of her videos, she can't even stand up. She's always seated. Well, people have noticed that it seems that she's just given up on life. This was brought to my attention by a client and fellow YouTuber, Sam at every size. Sam is an ex-fat acceptance or body positive type person that saw the light or maybe death. You know, because that's the end of the road for a lot of those people. Well, Hungry Fat Chick recently posted a video saying she's basically waiting to die. You know, it's gonna be my heart or something like that. And it's gonna be awful. In the video, she goes on to say that she's lonely and all she does is eat. She refuses to ask for help because she's embarrassed by how bad she's gotten and doesn't want to get the surgery as well similar to Samantha. And like I said before, Samantha and Hungry Fat Chick have something in common that they both eat for their job. Hungry Fat Chick says that she has to keep eating because she has to pay rent. But many of the commenters tell her, no, we will keep watching you. I've read comments literally begging her to just lose weight, be a weight loss channel, and you can still make money, you can still get your ad revenue, but you don't have to kill yourself doing this. I personally believe that the reason she won't switch to losing weight is because she's extremely addicted to food and uses her subscribers and jobs as an excuse or justification. It makes it a lot easier to stay addicted if that thing that you're addicted to makes you money. It really spoke to me because Samantha's story was very comforting once I knew she got the surgery. She might regret it, but it looks like she's doing great physically. Hungry Fat Chick's story is still being written and we're at the point of the story where she will either give up and die in her one bedroom apartment by herself or put her pride down and get help. I do hope that it's the second one. Unfortunately, I do believe that she believes that she's stuck. And it's not just a matter of, of getting some surgery for me. You know, it'd be, it'd be great if that would work for me, but I don't believe, 
I'm the type of person that that surgery would work on. I think she's under the impression that she can't do it, so why even try? And I think that she's very addicted to how easy it is to make money online once you have a following. She got a lot of boost in attention when she started eating on camera a lot of food. She got to meet Nico Avocado where she got even more attention. And so in her brain, she is connecting food to success. If she takes away the food, she takes away the success. So it's very, very easy to be like, this is it and just accept it. Depression runs high among the obese, especially the morbidly obese. It reminds me of the movie The Whale. The main character is slowly going downhill, actually quickly going downhill. His heart is pretty much going to give out and he could die at any second. Everyone's under the impression that he doesn't have the money to go to the hospital, but it turns out he does. He's just given up so hard that he lied and just wants to refuse treatment. So he continues to eat himself to death while his family members plead him to stop, but he doesn't. Unfortunately, he has no hope and already gave up on life and that's how it ends. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's how many of these people's story ends. I'm hoping Hungry Fat Chick gets that motivation or just does something to avoid that. Like Samantha's mom said, it's not gonna take any of us getting her to do it. It's gonna take herself. So I will just be sitting back and hoping that she sees what I see in her, that she can do this. But hopefully she could take the path that Samantha took, ask for help, humble herself, put the pride down, accept that it's gonna be embarrassing, but it's worth it in the end. Yeah, I'm like, not okay. I like to say I'm not lonely, and, but I kinda am. You know, and it's not like I'm not ordering food. I actually have leftover chicken to eat later. Um, Popeyes, I'm just going through the motions. I'm just day by day by day, just, just living, you know, if you could call this a life. Thank you guys so much for coming to this deep dive with me. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it and click down on the other videos. We had about three or four other videos this week. I've been posting, my fingers been working, editing, all for you, just for you. I don't benefit from this at all. I'm just kidding, I do benefit, but I also like talking to you guys and I also find all these topics extremely interesting. And if you do too, please join me on this channel. And remember, you do not have to be a size two. Having biceps to scare away all the boys and Andrew Tate is great to have, but not needed to be healthy. But health is very important. And if you are a binger like me, like Samantha, like many other people that we've talked about in here, just remember that you can do it. It's just going to take a lot of work. Now you have a good day. Bye. I like lace and I like braids, but I love my Free in my mind